What's happening everybody? Trey here, joined as always by my dad Sean, and today reactions to the classics. We got a reaction to the Waterboys, and not only a reaction, it is a top 10 yep. list of the Waterboys tunes, coming courtesy today from our longtime friend, patron, and supporter. We got Gerard bringing us this list. He's brought us uh, Thin Lizzy um, as well, and uh, the list he, he brings are always fun to discover. Yeah, uh, discover what we got Rory Gallagher uh, a couple months back as well. So uh, looking forward to this one. Before we get rocking and rolling today, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Helps us out. We upload every single day, uh, sometimes multiple times a day. Top ten lists, reviews, reactions, a bunch of fun stuff. So be sure to uh, get involved in the community here. And if you'd like. To to have us maybe do a top 10 list check out our patreon page down below shout out to the patrons who help keep this channel going but uh, all that to say dad i guess we can get into the uh, a little bit of a the quick facts gerard uh, did a lot of uh, great write-ups for uh, the songs and for just the water boys in general because i don't know the water boys I, I don't know either um do one other thing for us Check out the Twitch link below. Hit the follow button for live streams. And also check out our Facebook group. We've got a fantastic community. Uh, yeah, as you said, Gerard put a lot of nice write-ups, not only for the songs, but for the Water Boys in general. We always like to share what the patron thinks because obviously they have a passion for it or they That's wouldn't right. release the list. So here's what Gerard says about the Water Boys. They're a Scottish group formed in the 1980s and fronted by Mike Scott. No trade. Not that Mike Scott. <laughs> a man with one of the greatest snarls in rock and roll and a man who has been a confirmed grumpy old man Probably since his <laughs> mid-twenties. He's also the only guy that's been the constant in this group, cool. by the way. He's also one of the great British songwriters, certainly since the 80s, but ranks fairly high overall. The most common tag associated with the Water Boys is folk rock or maybe Celtic rock, which mm. is a term I know Mike hates. Largely, I suppose, because it unnecessarily pigeonholes them as mm. one type of band whereas their musical output from their debut in 1983 right up to this year covers a broad range of genres and mm. styles. The label comes from what was their biggest selling album, Fisherman's Blues, which right. does indeed have a folk-slash-Celtic rock vibe to it, and the album contains some of their great hit songs, but I mm. think it is right that they shouldn't be confined to one perception where their output is pretty varied within the rock genre. And uh, the Water Boys have had a varied membership, as you were mentioning, Dad, throughout their history. As Mike Scott himself puts it, the Water Boys are essentially Mike Scott and whoever he's playing <laughs> with. That's not a disservice to the musicians who have played live on, on the albums. They are a key ingredient to the brilliance of the band over the years, and the songs represented on this top ten covers the span of their career. The consistency of the output over 40 years has been due to the power and driving force of Mike's talent. He's a great songwriter in the mold of Ray Davies, Van Morrison, Paul Simon, a writer who can tell a great story in his lyrics and construct great melody around them. Perhaps a writer first and then a musician. Rod said, this is just my opinion based on the influence that poetry has on Mike's career so far as to make an album of W.B. Yeats's poems uh, put to music. Mike is a highly online presence and so if he sees this reaction <laughs> and if anything I have said is incorrect either in this introduction or the song comments I'm sure he will correct me. Well that would be kind of tight. Yeah, that would Mike. be cool. Mike just remember this was Gerard's comments. <laughs> Trey and I have nothing to do with this. Well, Trey let's kick this top 10. No let's uh, let's do it man. We got uh, the first song up on the list where the action is is get it pulled up there there you go uh, y'all can see from uh from 2019 so we're gonna go real uh real recent gerard says it's a barnstorming rocker to open the list and from one of the most recent album releases in 2019 mm -hmm. it shows mike in an all-out rocker mode and the incarnation of the band is very much a bluesy soulful right. band with the excellent brother paul on the keyboards organs this lineup is really great live and give great energy to the older classic water boy songs as well as the new songs good lyrics with some funny lines Instrumentation is really fantastic. It rocks as an album opener and an opener cool. to this list. As always, thanks, Gerard. We will have the lyrics up as we uh, as we follow along. And as always, the music will not be here. It will be in a separate link below. So if you want to watch the whole thing and follow along with us, check that out. If you just want to see what we think of the songs, hang out because we'll be right back. Where the action is from the record of the same name kicking us off here. And... Uh, uh, great uh, great sequencing on your list here, Gerard, because that was just uh, obviously an upbeat rocker that yeah. kind of just uh, got you ready to go. Fantastic guitar, some pretty cool lyrics. Yeah, man, the, the guitar solo in the middle, uh, I didn't expect it to come blistering in like either, that, man. but uh, that was awesome. And then that uh, that constant kind of motif of that Hammond organ, dirt, dirt, um, that was, uh, was kind of tight as well. And I like, you know, we had a little... 
little 2019 little uh, current stuff in here. That's right. You say the sweetest victory is in defeat, and you can fool the whole world with just <laughs> one tweet. I, I love that, man. Ain't that the truth? No, that one stuck out to me as well. Um, there, there were a couple humorous uh, lines in here. I once knew a man thought he was never wrong. He would argue with every damn word of this song. And then, you know, the chorus is uh, just simple. Let's go, baby, baby, where the action is. is. It gets stuck in your head. It and, does. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a mark of a great chorus in, uh, in my estimation here. So solid way to start off this list, Gerard. And uh, now we're going to throw it way back here. We're going to go to all the things she gave me from 1984's A Pagan Place. Uh, there's only eight songs on that record. Yeah, and Gerard said you couldn't call this folk rock. The sound <laughs> on this song I would best describe is big, big and expansive. <laughs> the lyrics speak for themselves. A scorn lover wanting to banish the memory of the love that is no more by setting <laughs> fire to anything that reminds him of her, as we'll see very shortly. Time heals all wounds. Wow, all right. what a great write-up for that. All the things all she in, gave man. me. Mm. Coming in here, number nine on the list. And, uh, yeah, I think Gerard summed it up. Very straightforward yeah. lyrically. But, Very uh, simple. I love love that chorus, man. Very, uh, just so, had so much uh, energy and was so alive. Yeah, and they were very smart in the way they punched it up with the sax and just over and over, well, at the last minute and a half, two minutes, just getting that to stick in your head. Uh, yeah, just enjoy the instrumentation. Obviously, very different from what we listened to from yeah, just exactly. a year ago, which you would expect. It shows the growth of the band. I realize they switched up musicians and those sorts of things. But uh, yeah, I mean, I like a lot of the lines. I said, I'm just looking for some place to burn all the things in that old chorus. Oh, the th- yeah, it had some back, female backing vocals, yeah. it sounded and like. It's uh, dark as hell here. The city's grown cold. Yeah. The devil's in drag playing poker with soul. I like that line. The lots are all empty. The last man is out. The moon's made of cheese. And God is a boy <laughs> scout. So it's all kinds of little clever things. Oh, yeah. There. Had the alliteration, the cathedrals and candles, yep. chimneys and choirs. I'll dream about that place where I set fire. <laughs> all the things. Dude, yeah. Just, uh, and I, I like, you know, that sometimes in songs like this where there's like a two minute outro I feel it's too long but that yeah. one it was just no, it was so alive that uh, I, I didn't mind that in the slightest so now we're going to go to number eight from um, the very acclaimed record Gerard was telling us Fisherman's Blues from 1988 we got And a Bang on the Ear he says uh, not quite to all the girls I've loved before <laughs> or indeed Mambo number five but the lyrics are a stroll through the ex-girlfriends of the narrator of the song hmm. given the tone and theme of the previous song Mike seems to have become more philosophical in the years between all the things she gave me and a bang on the ear I'm not sure how autobiographical the lyrics actually are well Mike if you're watching this let us know <laughs> and there's always a danger to see the quote I in a song is necessarily the songwriter's own story that's a really good point mm-hmm. but given he mentions the name of all the women in the song I hope they They liked it, at least. (laughs) The instrumentation is full and enjoyable. Accordions, fiddles, guitars, ten whistles, Eulinian pipes, Mm. etc. A whole lot of fun. (laughs) This was released as the second single from the record. Went to one in Ireland, 51 in the UK. Fiddle player Steve uh, Wickham recalled of the song, quote, We played a lot of takes before we got this right. It is often the simple ones that are the most difficult. That was a really good... uh quote and this one's a much longer song i know that the longest one on this yep. list clocking over nine minutes so with the gerard's uh build up of the instrumentation i'm expecting uh expecting some cool stuff here bringing it in a uh, really cool storytelling technique just going through all uh all these gals from uh whenever he was a, a young lad all the way up to now i uh I, I don't know what and a bang on the air well, means though i had to look it up it says of celtic origin a phrase meaning an affectionate kiss or pat on the ear okay. or cheek Popularized by the Scottish <laughs> band The Water Boys and their song of the same name. Okay, so, cool. Well, that's that's kind of what like, I, you know. Here in America, I'm gonna go up and just you know, you know that's not usually yeah, 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 it's not usually gonna go well for you, man. <laughs> but uh, no, I think uh, I think the way he was writing uh, about all these um, uh, women, like uh, it was in a in an affectionate manner. But then in the third line, I liked it. He just noted how oh, life uh, took took these gals one way and him another type yeah. of thing and that's why it didn't work out so uh, that's how life goes I think it had an interesting technique just like the last one just like all the things she gave me mm-hmm. uh, the outro just with the chorus over and You're over right. again to stick in your head with some diverse instrumentation and uh, you know we went with the album version obviously I'm you know the single version is uh, going to be shorter I'm yeah. assuming here but uh, you know great use of the accordion coming in definitely had that more kind of Celtic and, and folky kind of exactly. vibe because we had that the fit 
Riddle, I, I thought uh, I thought brought it as well, man, and it just worked uh, worked with the storytelling that uh, he was going uh, uh, through. Uh, Deborah might be the the saddest one though. He yeah. fell for her one summer on the road to Liverpool. I thought it was forever, but it was over in a year. Oh dear! But I give my love with a bang on the ear. That'll be uh, stuck in my head, my head all man. day, man. Uh, and then he kind of wraps it up at the end. I, I think that's where we get. To, you know, he's coming from and where I'm a good heart. So my women of the uh, hearth fire harbor of my soul, I watch you lightly sleeping. And since the dream that does unfold, you to me are treasured, you to me are dear. So I'll give you my love with the bang on the ear. Uh, cool, cool tune right there, man. Um, like that one, and it was a good follow up on this list. And now we're gonna go to track number seven here. We got Sweet Dancer from An Appointment with Mr. Geets in 2011. Yeah, Gerard says quite a brave but confident venture. Mike and the boys recorded an album of poems by Yeats put to their music. Mm-hmm. This is born from a love of the great man's poetry. They had already recorded a song, The Stolen Child, which was, again, a Yeats poem mm-hmm. put to music. But a full album could have gone very wrong in the wrong hands. That is very true. But what makes this album work, and this song is an example of it, is, one, many of Yeats's poems have a natural musical quality to the lyrics, so they lend themselves to being mm-hmm. interpreted musically. Two, Mike's own lyrics are very often poetic, and the band's musical past over 30 years of releasing and recording prior to this album gave them every possibility to make this album a success, which I believe it was. This song takes those great lyrics and finds the music, the instrumentation, the phrasing that marries the words and the music wonderfully with a great guest vocal performance by Katie Kim and the beautiful fiddle by Steve Wickham. Cool, man. Well, let's uh, let's get going on this one after that build-up. All right, Sweet Dancer bringing us in at number seven here. A lot of a cool um, little tidbits, I think, thrown in. I thought, yeah. thought Kim brought a, a, a nice, um, you know, just texture with her sweeter voice that came in midway through the song. And uh, again, I thought that um, I thought that, that Wickham's fiddle uh, added a, a, again a nice instrumentation here, and uh, Scott himself was doing a little lighter delivery from I think anything we heard up to this point won't end up among my favorites personally, but uh, I, I still thought that uh, it was a, a solid tune. Yeah, I mean I don't have much more to add. I think it's you know when you understand what they're doing here mm-hmm. and able to you know what a, what a wonderful. Uh, way to be able to mix their instrumentation into this it sounds like it all goes together it doesn't oh, seem yeah. like they put something on top of something else so yeah just a just a nice effort it won't be on my favorites either but really respect it for what it is yeah and i wonder what uh wonder what this, this what what's up with this sweet dancer because she's out there escaped from her bitter youth escaped out of her crowd uh then he notes if strange men come from the house to lead her away please do not say she's crazy lead them gently astray let her finish her, her dance so uh i'm just kind of picturing a free spirit out here yeah beating to her own drum and maybe that uh, uh you know make some some people uncomfortable or whatever whatever the case may be um but uh, obviously to the the lyricism uh, very poetic as one would expect <laughs> um but we're gonna go now to number six here no, uh, nearest thing to hip um this is from modern blues in 2015 gerard said this late album from 2015 was the first with the current incarnation of the group and was a real return to form for mike and the boys only one song from it is represented on this list but the entire album is worth a listen this song is one that i completely relate to and i'm sure sean and perhaps trey if he is old enough to be an honorary member of the uh, statler <laughs> and uh, waldorf grumpy old man club will also relate to uh, <laughs> a tale of visiting a town that mike hadn't been to in a long time and seeing that it has changed utterly and mostly for the worst um the gentrification and banal boring makeover of the world anything with character and unique independence brought and transformed to a blend co-modification for the service of tourists and chinless wonders man what a write-up Gerard's no, no bringing joke. forth i love it mike brilliantly captures a feeling of seeing things becoming worse unnecessarily perhaps the things we imagine from our past are nostalgic and rose tinted hmm. i think that's a really good point Gerard. <laughs> but we experience them and actually yes they were better you know what i think you're right i don't think i'm a member of the grumpy old man club and i'm kind of making me think i am <laughs> didn't know if there's anything at the end there or not no yeah yeah i uh we we got a little uh Almost like an old time radio uh, deal there, it but reminded me of being the nearest thing to hit. Near, nearest thing to hit, man. What were your thoughts? This on is that? my favorite song so far. I think it's mine too. It, both instrumentally, obviously yeah. lyrically, it, it is exactly what Gerard, you know, <laughs> described it so well. You're just revisiting somewhere, and everything that was cool about it's kind of gone, and now we're just in this cookie cutter world, which is yeah. kind of what this world's become. You know, there's no no character to it. And this was, you know, released almost six years ago at the time mm-hmm. of. Uh, 
of recording this, so things have gotten much worse in that level, I think. No, definitely, and uh, you know, though I, I, I can't relate a ton, I've really only lived in two towns yeah. my whole life. I've lived in uh, the town we're at now for 15 years, um, and I haven't made my way back to Lubbock, Texas. Uh, You're you not. Know, made famous musically. Uh, Buddy Holly's got uh, got some ties there, but uh, um, you know, man, I, I think that Gerard brings up a good point just in life. You know, we always kind of... Uh, hype up things maybe in our minds from yeah, when we, we were kids or this the past, or that. Like, yeah. dude that was so great we remember all the great stuff that happened but don't remember oh this didn't have this or that or yeah your mind this. does that too it filters out yeah. the negative and remembers the positive for sure <laughs> um, and you know that just I think is uh, accentuated if your current situation isn't good you think oh man yeah. life was so much better back yeah. in this town but uh, then you go back and you see man uh, the coolest thing they have is just a crackling stereo that's playing uh, Sun Ra, Charlie Parker, Miles Davis, and John Coltrane, and <laughs> and the the record store you used to go to is is now bulldozed, and um, just every everything that you used to enjoy, just uh, you figure out, hey man, it wasn't a wasn't as uh, cool now as it was back yeah, then. Yeah, exactly. Um, and a cool little, I like the comatose lane, the Wobegon Square, the Deadbeat Street. A nice, nice N- use nice of names. Nice wordplay for sure. Showing, uh, showing Mike's, uh, you know, lyrical, lyrical prowess uh, right there. But we'll, uh, we'll, we're now halfway through the list, ladies and gentlemen. And now we're going to go to the Raggle Taggle Gypsy. I'm already, uh, I'm already digging the name right here. This is from the record Room to Rome from 1990. Boy, that's a, that's a wordplay there. <laughs> Gerard says this is a song that's derived from a traditional Scottish Irish song, the true origin of its original text song I'm not aware of but the song as it is covered here has been performed and recorded multiple times by various folk slash traditional mm-hmm. bands possibly the first version that brought it to popular attention was by the Irish group Planksty in 1973 this is at least this at least is the version that uh, this Waterboys version is styled mm-hmm. on that 1973 one but of course they bring their own stamp to the song added a mixture of rock energy to the traditional melody and instrumentation a song that goes down great live as is oh, to be expected. Cool, man. Well, uh, let's uh, let's get going on this one on under three minutes. I, this might be the shortest one on the list. The Raggle Taggle Gypsy O coming in at number five here. Um, uh, right away, I felt like I needed a uh, a pint of Guinness right, yeah. next to me. Yeah, just the traditional sound that we've we've learned to appreciate from listening to the yeah. Pogues and some other stuff that. You know, it's kind of like an old friend there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there were three old gypsies came to our hall door. They came brave and boldly, oh, and the one sang high and the other sang low. And they sang, the other sang a ragged, a raggle taggle gypsy. Oh, you can tell it's an older, you know, with the verbiage and stuff. No, I like the O. Oh, and, and, yeah, then essentially this, uh, I mean, they must have been singing great uh, or something because she just bolts. And then uh, the Lord uh, came in, you know, the, the master of the house. He's like, Where, where's my lady? Oh, yeah. Where's the lady? Oh, and uh, he gets told, well, she's with the raggle taggy gypsy. Oh, Took so, off with him, man. so he gets on his white horse. He rides all the way around. He finally finds her and asks her, yo, why, why in the world do you leave the house? This or that? And she says, um, tonight I lie in a wide open field in the arms of a raggle taggle gypsy o. I'd rather have a kiss from the raggle taggle gypsy o. Kind of brutal, man. Really brutal. Who but knows? honest, man. Hey, you want honesty? You got it. Right and here. the song cuts off. Who knows what the what the the previous uh, you know who, who what the husband did after that? I don't know. I might uh, I might have to flip out after that. But uh, a cool little tune there. Now we're gonna go to number four here with a girl called Johnny from a self-titled record in 1983. Gerard noted this from their debut, perhaps the reply to A Boy Named Uh Sue. (laughs) One of the things that drives some of the Waterboy songs is that Mike plays the piano like a percussion instrument rather than a melodic instrument. That's good to know. The pounding of the piano drives the song like an engine, and this is one of the best examples. Excellent sax solo too. The lyrics are possibly more in date in 2020 Uh than they were in 1983. It's crazy how many songs we come across that lately bar. for sure, man. I like that. Lead single went to AD in the UK. It was inspired by American singer songwriter Patti Smith. Mm. Scott discovered Smith's musical work and poetry in 1976, became a big fan. 
which led him to forming his own fanzine. So he was really oh, big a time. jungle land, it was called. In 1978, Mike was aware Patty was due to perform with her band at the Rainbow Theater in London. Mm. He knew she always stayed at the Portobello Hotel and was successful in speaking to her over the phone oh. after ringing the hotel. That's Different tight. time and place, guys. <laughs> That's Different tight, time man. and place. Smith suggested Scott come down from Scotland to see the show and write about it in his fanzine. He traveled <laughs> down to London by train with Smith providing him with a concert ticket covering the expense of his hotel room and placing him under the care of her guitarist wow. Winnie Kay and Mike, what a story Mike said this there's a line about a girl called Johnny in one of her songs called Redondo Beach and I heard a tape she'd done and noticed that Johnny is a hero or heroine on <laughs> lots of her songs so I thought I'd make her Johnny what a great cool, story she said, a different time a different place where you know people were a little more uh, that's an understatement uh Open to open to their fans <laughs> for sure. Or, uh, really enjoyed that one instrumentally. Maybe my favorite instrumental piece we've had. Yeah, you noticed right away just what just what uh, what Gerard was saying about uh, the the piano and mm-hmm. you know just hammering on that piano, the horns. This is the first one that actually, to me, and not in a bad way, but sounded of the time. Okay, yeah, it's from 1983, mm-hmm. and it sounded from 1983. Not not a bad thing at all, but yeah, really let the instrumentation kind of uh, marinate mm-hmm. in, in, and really just settle you into the mood of the song. Well, I, uh, I, I like you said that I enjoyed the uh, saxophone and the, yeah, that I mean, piano was very powerful, and the lyrical content was pretty tight as well. Um, a girl called Johnny who changed her name when she discovered her choice was to change or be changed. I mm-hmm. thought that was pretty cool. Um, she was uh, black as hell and white as a goat. Don't talk about life or death. She said, quote, I've had enough of both. I thought that was uh, really a strong and powerful line as well. She ended up getting on the train, skedaddling on out of there. Uh, If she said goodbye, well, I never heard, but the noise goes on. The noise, the jazz, and the truth is in somebody else's hands. And the house that a girl called Johnny built is now just so much ashes and sand. So Great last lines. A a lot of mystique kind of surrounding this one about uh, the girl called Johnny. And uh, the little we know about her doesn't uh, almost even aid us into knowing more about her. No, it does not, which is kind of a cool technique as well. So uh, now we're going to go to the Glastonbury song. A, uh, I, I know the I know the Glastonbury just from the the great music festival yeah. that occurs there uh, each year. This is from Dream Harder in 1993. And Gerard says there are three notable things about Glastonbury in Somerset, England. Of course, I'm sure there are many, many notable <laughs> things, but three relate to the song. One, arguably the greatest music festival in the world, takes place there. Most years, as we live in a COVID world right now. <laughs> Two, it's a place known for spiritual beliefs and practices, paganism, druidism, etc. It is said to be a place that Jesus visited in the UK. I believe these three things in particular feed into the lyrics of the song, which are perhaps both straightforward and abstract at the same time. He puts in parentheses, which is always a sign of good <laughs> lyrics, the references to fairy forts and ancient ways, crazy horse and the king of the blues, and finding God, which can be a metaphor for many things. Mm. On top of the lyrics is wonderful melody and instrumentation, and more than one really catchy hook. Needless to say, the Water Boys are a mainstay at the festival each year. This song goes down very well there, and everywhere else they oh, play. I, I would imagine this was the uh, second single from the record, 29 in the UK, 12 in Ireland. Uh, Mike told Rolling Stone in 93 that it's almost like a place to go on a pilgrimage, a holy, sacred place. It's inspiring to be there. And he later said in 2003, it's actually one of the most commercial, radio-friendly mm-hmm. songs musically that I've ever produced. In many countries, it was successful, but in Britain, they wouldn't play it because of the chorus. Well, oh, well, what's that, that's a good <laughs> setup right there. Number three on our list, Glastonbury Song, Bringing It, Man. What do you think of this one? I enjoyed it a ton, man. I enjoyed it yeah. a ton. I thought it had a great sound. Um you know, I think the lyrics were, were good. I think some of the lyrics we've had before were, you know, better. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that was the whole the whole point of this. I guess the chorus, I just found God, I just found God, I just found God, where he always was, was what uh, what got him in trouble and not getting it played. I guess, yeah, I was expecting something a little more, more provo- controversial. Yeah, yeah provocative, know. but, uh, you know, um, we, we know, though, <laughs> we know that the BBC doesn't need too much to ban something. No, um, yeah, this is a song that just really uh, kind of gets you at peace, man. I, yeah. I, I thought that it was a wholly unique on this list instrumentally, and uh, mm-hmm. um, I did too. we had a, a nice blistering solo kind of at the end, which was pretty tight. Um, and again, yeah, just setting uh, setting the scene and the images in your mind, all uh, um, all the places he mentions in the first verse, um, and uh, you know we do have the the 
kind of religious theme. Yeah. Took a tip from the Buddha boy, mentions the king of the blues, took a long last look at Crazy Hush, uh, Horse, Push Now for a Golden Age, and then you get the, the catchy chorus, man. Um, I like uh, one of the lines here towards the end. So, uh, I found myself on the yeah. roof of the world just waiting for to get my wings. Strange angel in the changing light said, brother, you forgot something. Um, I, I thought that was a pretty tight. I did too. Um, but yeah, and I, I think that, yeah, this could just kind of be any place that uh, you imagine almost like a, a mecca or a peaceful um, oasis almost could be. And uh, he put that into into Glastonbury, man. So I can see why uh, why that's a big hit at the festival for sure. Two songs left, ladies and gentlemen. We're up to our number two track, the title track from Fisherman's Blues coming up here from uh, 1988. Gerard says one of the biggest hits for the Water Boys from one of their biggest albums. This album and possibly the song is where I think the quote folk rock tag mm. became attached to the Water Boys. Album was recorded in Ireland and Dublin and in the west of Ireland and drew a lot of influence from Irish and Celtic folk music, including a song with music out to the words of Yeats, which obviously in 2011 they were yeah. really embracing. It's their <laughs> biggest selling album and even made a dent in the U.S. album charts. The title Dang. track was also the big hit single. The very prominent fiddle performance from, yeah, we've seen him before. That's Steve right. Steve Wickham, a folk melody on guitar and lyrics dreaming of freedom and a romantic vision of life on the seas. The lyrics mm. really do contain great imagery and put a vision in the mind's eye of life on the waves under the stars. Beautiful. Uh, and this was the lead single, 13 in Ireland, 32 in the UK, number three on the oh, U.S. Okay. Billboard Modern Rock Charts. Um, it was reissued in 91, also had success then. Uh, Mike began writing the song on a plane flight from New York to London at the end of the Waterboys' North American tour in November of 85. During his time in New York, Scott had a meeting with the band's manager, Gary uh, Kerfurst. However, their relationship had become strained by this time. In his autobiography, Scott revealed, quote, I knew that the relationship with uh, Kerfurst her first, say that ten times yeah. fast, uh, was in a terminal decline. I wanted out, squeezed into seat 31F. I wrote down my feelings in verse on the back of my boarding pass, the beginnings of a new song called Fisherman's Blues. Some of the lyrics were also inspired by a W.H. Auden poem, The Night Mail. So, cool story. Yeah, nice, nice background there. And uh, let's, uh, let's see what we got. Number two on the list, Fisherman's Blues coming in here. Uh, I can see why this was such a big hit, man, because uh, this just kind of, uh, it, it kind of just uh, is almost uh, inspiring and freeing in a sense, it, man. It really is. I was a fisherman tumbling on the seas, far away from dry land, and it's bitter memories, casting out my sweet line with abandonment and love. No ceiling bearing down on me except the starry sky above, with light in my head, you in my arms. Woo. I think, yeah, it just immediately puts you in that time. Mm-hmm. But look, man, I don't have all these things. Hold me in. I'm just out here. It's me and nature. You know, the, the nice little no ceiling bearing down on me. All yeah. that stuff is just fantastic. No, you can put yourself right in uh, in Mike's shoes in this uh, in this one, I think. Um, and just uh, that that whole light affair with the light in my head, you in my arms. Woo, just that the simple the simplicity of life whenever you got got somebody there to love. Yeah, and then he and goes from the sea to the train. Man. No, that's right. So I, I thought that was uh, that was tied to noting the, the burning of the coal. Counting the towns flashing by in a night that's full of soul. So now, uh, you know, he's he's putting in the hard work. He's not wishing for, like, you know, no work to, to be, you know, done or whatever. No, he just doesn't want all these distractions. Yeah. Once again, he's somewhere where people can't, you know, mess with Yeah, him. so I, I thought that was uh, pretty cool. And you know, then in the, the as we get to the end, you know, breaking free from the bonds and the chains and all of that, um, he knows, I will ride on the train. I will be the fisherman with light in my head, you in my arms. Ooh, um so and I, I, I thought this was a really just pleasant, easy on the ears too. Yeah, it was. And, uh, obviously, it had some folky type of uh, instrumentation, but uh, it's kind of a kind of a shame that they got pigeonholed into yeah, that I agree just with from this because yeah. it's not just straight up kind no, of folk that I would at all. I would think in my mind. But anyways, man, drum roll, y'all. We're gonna be going now to the number one song on this list, courtesy of Gerard. We have the whole of the moon bringing it in here from This Is The Sea in 1985. Gerard noted a truly great song. There's a great Irish football pundit who has always maintained the importance of distinguishing between a good player and a great player. 
Because if you go around calling uh, Everett or every good player great, it loses its meaning. That's a good point. Uh, I feel the same about music, and in that vein, this is not a good song. It is a great song. Mm. Music is brilliant. That driving piano is, again, more like a percussion than melody instrument, driving the song along with great keyboard and strings and culminating in a saxophone introduced at just the right time. Man, you're already hyping yeah, you're, me up. You're, you're, you're getting hyped. Um, the lyrics are wonderful. They depict a young apprentice comparing himself to a great master, someone who talked and dreamed of doing something comparing himself to someone who actually did it. The constant comparison through different imagery and juxtaposition serves ultimately as inspiration rather than admission of defeat, I think. This can be heard through the vocal style, which uh, was an awestruck, hopeful feel to it. There has been a lot of speculation as to who is being referred to in the lyrics. Some people have said Prince, or Dylan, or maybe even Van Morrison. I'm not sure, and really I think it doesn't matter who it actually is written about, because it ultimately has a universal meaning for anyone striving for greatness. Um, great lyrics, great music, and a great, great song. What a write-up, and I went ahead and found some stuff on this, too. It's number one on the list. It deserves that. Single was not a big success when initially released in 85, only making the lower ends of the chart, although it reached 12 in Australia. Subsequently, became one of the Waterboys' best-known songs and their most commercially successful. It is arguably the band's signature song. It was the Novella Award winner for Best Song Musically and Lyrically in uh, 1991 upon the re-release where it reached number three in the U.K., the song began as, quote, a scribble on the back of an envelope on a wintry New York street. So mm. we had the boarding pass for the last song. And That's we got right. The envelope. After Mike's girlfriend asked him if it was difficult to write a song, I guess he was showing <laughs> out a little bit, Scott added further lyrics to the song upon returning to his hotel and after mm-hmm. his return to London. Mike has said the song subject of, quote, a composite of many people, including C.S. Lewis, but explicitly states it's not about Prince. He's also said... The Hole of the Moon is about someone like C.S. Lewis who seemed uh, to see so much and explore issues more deeply than most people. Or it could be about a Jimi Hendrix type person who comes, quote, like a comet blazing your trail ah. and is gone too soon, but it's not specifically about anyone. I like to look when, when the meaning is, is wondered about. about yeah. song, I like to look for the, the lyricist in interviews from like multiple years to kind of see so how their story the changed. Full picture so up kind of wanted to give that to you there. But once again, we got number one. Let's do this. Ooh. All right. The Hole of the Moon bringing us in. At number one, and for me, Gerard, I think you chose right. This is my favorite track. Mine too. On the list, man, saving the best for last, indeed. Um, so much to enjoy about this. Uh, musically, it again just was so vibrant, had a bunch of uh, you know energy and life to yep. it. Agreed. Uh, I definitely like that. What do you think of it, Dad? Yeah, I love the lyrics. I love the instrumentation. It was the song for me of all the songs that everything came together. You're right. Yeah, everything firing on all cylinders. All, um, exactly right. You know, and, and the chorus. You were there in the turnstiles with the wind at your heels. You stretched for the stars. Mm. You know how it feels to reach too high, too far, too soon. You saw the whole of the yeah, I, I like how uh, the you know just kind of opposite juxtaposed. And I was dumbfounded by truth. You cut through lies. Uh, I was grounded while you filled the skies. Um, I spoke about wings that you just flew. <laughs> I wondered. I guessed and tried. You just knew I sighed, but you swooned. I saw the crescent. You saw the whole of the moon. And yeah, I mean this could definitely just be a. Uh, uh, as kind of Gerard noted, this you could apply this to anybody yeah, in sure. your life personally or whoever you really want it to be who has reached those heights and uh, that uh, you may uh, may be uh, you know striving towards. But then at the very end, we you know it notes uh, with the wind in your sails, you came like comet, blazing your trail too high, too far, too soon. You saw the whole of the moon. Reminds me kind of the Neil Young, uh, is yeah. it, you know, burning out too bright yeah. type of deal. Um, but, man, really a great way to end this list. And now we're going to go to our favorite tracks. Yeah, I was doing a little, uh, I had to do a little quick last second uh, change about yeah. here. Um, so for me, the honorable mentions are All the Things She Gave Me and Glassenberry mm-hmm. Song, which I had it in my face, but I had to do a last second. And then my favorites are And a Bang on the Ear, Nearest mm. Thing to Hip, and of course we've already given it away. The whole of the moon. moon. Yeah, I gotta go the whole of the moon. I'm gonna also include nearest thing to hip in mine. I just like how uh, like the story yeah, that told, man. you know, going back uh, to to an old hometown. And I'm gonna put a girl called Johnny in there with ah. honorable mention to uh, Glastonbury song and all the thing she gave me. Really fun list. Let us know your thoughts on the Water Boys in general, and uh, if you're so inclined, give your top ten list down below. And uh, again, Gerard, just want to shout you out and thank you, my friend, for uh, introducing this.
Uh, thank you, Dad, as always, yeah. for the research. And until next time, y'all, thanks for watching. Happy listening, and we will see you.